Hey guys, Platinum here. So Dark Tide is coming out tomorrow, and since I played just a little bit of the pre-order beta, I thought I'd chime in and give my two cents on some of the ways in which you can make your life easier as a fresh recruit of the Imperium. This video will split into two parts. The first will be talking about the progression system, which I think is important to know in order to save time and brain cells, seeing as how it's not only RNG based, but also heavily time gated. The second part will boil down to ways you can open the game without having a PC and or Xbox spontaneously combust and some other settings that I think are useful for everybody. Bonus tip before we start, at character creation there's already a couple of things you should keep in mind. There is a barber shop available in game to change your appearance. However, at the time of recording the barber shop cannot change your height, voice, name or background post creation. Keep in mind height affects your hitbox. And bonus tip, if you choose Skadia as your home planet, it gives you two extra purplish eye color choices and unlocks a voice personality for the sharpshooter. So let's get right into it. Firstly, we have currencies. Gold is basically given out like candy on Halloween as it's awarded upon each mission completion. You gain a little extra if you complete side objectives, but know that special conditions like Endless Horde only give extra XP, but little to no extra gold. There are the cubes and cylinders as well, which are crafting materials you pick up through missions. You'd need around 15 missions on average to get enough to upgrade a white item to the highest tier possible, so just keep that in mind and try to save those until you find the perfect crafting base. More on that later. Finally, we have Sire Melk's hexagon coins, which definitely aren't a crypto Ponzi scheme. These are one of the time gated factors, since you can only earn so much while completing your weeklies. Now on to ways you can spend your gold, mainly you can do this by throwing it at our lobotomized friend here to try and buy weapons and tickets. This shop resets every hour on the hour, so check it constantly to make sure you don't miss any sexy shovels. Sir Milk store has two options, you either buy from a selection of high rarity items that rotates every 24 hours, or you roll your hard earned need bucks in this gambling machine. I recommend only doing either one if you hit level 30, but do keep in mind you need to wait until the daily shop updates for the weapon stats to go up. Also, I recommend keeping around 2.5k milk coins before rolling away the extra, just in case an especially sexy item shows up in the shop. But Platinum, what weapons should you look for? Well, shop offerings for both stores are purely scaled off of your character level, so really you want to hit 30 first. While you level, you can keep an eye out for trinkets with extra XP gain, but that's about it. The only other exception is blue rarity items and above. Since these items have blessings which you can extract, you can combine them later on to make higher tier blessings up to 4 times, which you can then infuse into your base item. According to Fatshark, this won't be available on release, but they will soon enough add this crafting option, so it's best to start saving now. But crafting items is expensive, so what's the perfect base? Well, people often mistakenly judge based on the rating of the weapon, but this rating is a combination of the base stats, plus an arbitrary extra value assigned by the blessings and the traits of the weapon. The base stat block of the weapons are the only thing you can't craft to improve upon in any way. So that should be the main thing you look out for as soon as you hit 30, and which is why items sometimes can be better than masterwork items in the shop. But Platinum, this cryptic yellow bars mean nothing to me. Yeah, you're kinda right. Bad Shark is planning to add a numerical value for these bad boys. And once you do, you can just look at the stats and see if they line up with your preference. Or simply go for the Ogren approved big brain, bigger number strategy. But for now, all you have to do is resort to either eyeballing them or use your sweet Photoshop skills to see which one is better. So, in short, Get as much of this as you can, and then look at this and see if these stats line up with what you really need. Also as an addendum, here is a rough visual of what each of the stats do, created by a member of the community. Feel free to pause the video if you want. If you want even more detail, I highly recommend you watching a video by JSAT I have linked below, which goes into even greater explanation of these stats for some performance tips to make sure you get the best out of your toaster. This first one is huge for PC users. Before you launch the game, you will come across this window. 
go into the settings and lower your worker thread count. Funnily enough, bigger number here doesn't always mean better, and lowering this count to around 8 to 9 can have a huge performance boost. Play around with this and see what works on your machine. If you're still struggling, I recommend going into settings and turning ambient occlusion off first. This improved my FPS by a considerable margin. After all else fails, just set everything to low and enable downscaling for your system. It would be either DLSS, which you set to automatic, or AMD Fidelity TFX, you would set it to performance or above. Having Bloom enabled also doesn't really impact performance and makes specials and also tracers bullets much easier to spot in hordes, so I strongly advise you turn that on. Finally, if you can handle it, turn your FOV to maximum. In this game, you need to keep your head on a constant swivel and make sure no ghosts or ghoulies come from behind, so a large FOV helps so much with that. Plus, there's practically no fishbowl effect in this game compared to others, so it's a no-brainer to me. So that's about does it. Please let me know if I missed anything and I'll pin it in the comments. As I said, this guide is aimed at trying to help you understand the progression and give some tips on the settings menu. I have a few more gameplay videos in the works, including a max level Psyker Damnation guide as well as a Psyker Penance video, and some movement decks that I feel are not known about. Let me know also if you would be interested in an advanced or a beginner guide for other gameplay tips and I'll work on that too. See ya!